right, guys, and welcome back to yet another episode of Painter Dude. Thank you for watching this video, and if you're new here, please go ahead and subscribe. Just help me out. You can see I've got a black canvas that I've just covered with a thin coat of black gesso. The bottle's lasted me a pretty good long while now. Now, because this is oils, I suggest you use black gesso and not regular acrylic paint. It's because you don't really want those mixing together. Primer's what you want anyway. Now, I haven't applied liquid clear this magical stuff to the canvas yet because some people kind of struggle with that and I haven't so far but, and because I'm if I'm just a beginner you should be able to do it too let's just open it up and apply it to the canvas now this takes a very 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 thin coat don't hardly have to add any now I've got just a little bit like around my lid and that's probably going to be enough for me is just a little bit. I'm just going to slightly spread it all over the canvas. If you have too much, your painting's going to drip off your canvas, and that's not what you want. Now that I got a good little bit in there, I can start moving it around. using pretty firm brush strokes to spread this around. I think maybe the reason people may struggle with this because they can't really see it like you can with liquid white. But if you're working under like a good light, like what, what I got here, you can tell by where it's at by the sort of reflection on the brush. Because I did not add too much, I can actually grab just the ever so slightest drop on my two inch brush and cover it here. I just about got it all. And don't think that because this is a thin coat, it's going to dry too fast. It won't. It took, I think, three days for one of my first liquid clear painting to dry. Let's see. I think that about does it. Now. I think it's about time for them to run the colors across the screen that I'm going to be using for this painting. I'm just going to get or grab some phthalo blue and just tap it into my brush. And I'm just going to cover the whole canvas with it. You guys, the canvas will probably look black still. And that's okay because phthalo blue is a transparent color. Don't need much. Probably should have added less. This is my second oil seascape. So now if you want, you got oil paints, you can follow along with this. Or if you got acrylics, you can do follow along with my other video. I literally can't see where my phthalo blue's at, except around here. So I think it's probably good enough. So 
I'm going to wash my two inch brush to start. getting a little slick from the liquid clear so I'm just going to wipe my hand off I'm afraid my brush is going to fly out of my hand I think I'm just going to start some titanium white and just Start in the center and go outward. Right here, where I think I missed the phthalo blue, I'm gonna tap a little bit into it and add it in. Simple as that. Looks a little weird, but that's okay. This is a seascape, so I think I'm probably gonna stop about here. Now I'm gonna wash my too much brush again. You know it. Now this is a little splatter box I built right here. All right, my plan was to have a wooden one, but I didn't really have like a idea on how I wanted to make it, so I started with a cardboard one. And the reason I'm using the brush beater act instead of it is because this is just too small for it yet. Now with the dry brush, I'm gonna start blending it out. And you don't have to use a two inch brush, you can use a one inch brush. Just whatever you feel like using. Oop, got a hair. I think I'm going to add a little moon right in the center. Lightly, I'm going to take my palette knife and just get all the paint that's off it because the color is going to stay there. Lightly put it in there. Looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna take my one inch brush and add a couple clouds in. I'm just gonna blow it full of titanium white. I'm already having second thoughts, clouds aren't my biggest my biggest strong suit. Yeah, let's have another one line up. I'm going to clean my one inch brush. I'm going to go back to that white. Just brighten it up here and there.
The latest one comes out in front of this. Now, because paint thinner and liquid clear have a violent reaction with each other, at least that's what I think Bob said, is that, so I like to kind of wipe it off on a paper towel before I go back in, because I'm afraid it's going to like bubble up or something. So now that it's clean, I'm going to lightly blend the base of these clouds, not the top. You ain't worried about the top just yet. Clouds look soft and fluffy. I'm just using light circular strokes. The seascape doesn't look very good, forgive me. This is only my second oil painting. I'm just gonna lightly, lightly touch it to get rid of my little circular brush strokes. I think I should blend it a little here too. doing my best not to touch the top of these clouds. I think I'm not ready for the next part. So I'm going to wash my too much brush again. And don't forget to wash your oil paint brushes with odorless paint thinner. Don't use water. I'm just lightly lifting up these clouds at the top. I'm using these light, light circular strokes. And then you can just lightly, very lightly, blend them together. These clouds are even better than the last time I painted them. Ooh. I'm just going to lightly blend this area. It looks a little dark. Like that. I think I like my clouds, actually. And that's the key. Practice. First thing I'm going to do for my seascape is take some of my white. It's alright if it's dirty. And I'm just going to. I think my horizon line is here. I know my, because I think in the other seascape I had my wave right here. In fact, why don't I just lay him in right now? And this can help. It's not really, there's no really such thing as cheating in painting. Here's where my wave's going to be. I'm just going to, I think I'm going to lay the other ones in too. Yeah, why not? Let's have them right 
Yeah. It don't look just right yet, but I'm going to change that. And you can change anything with this technique at any point. Like if you want to add another cloud. In fact, I'm just going to add one. Yep, you can add clouds with your fan brush too. So long as you're doing circular strokes. He's a little guy. Maybe he comes out all the way out here too. I'm just going to lightly blend the base of him. He disappears out here. Getting off track. Now, I'm going to wash my brush again. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other clouds. Just going to lightly, lightly fluff the top. Lightly put them in there. If you struggle with clouds like me, you might want to think about investing in the Bob Ross Blender brush. As soon as I can get one, I think I'm going to buy it. Wow, looks like a whole family of clouds. Now, remember what I did here. This is going to look like a bunch of little shimmers in the water. I don't like that. I think I'm gonna. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm gonna take a tiny bit of my liquid white. There we go. I think I'm gonna put it. Ooh. Lucky this is a bottle. I can put all that liquid white back in there when I'm done. I'm gonna take just a tiny bit liquid white teeny bit and thin my white down a little it's really thick I'm going to start that, that looks better I think this is what I did in the other one Bit a tad brighter right here where the moon is. I'm going to blend all that out later. First, I'm going to put this guy back in there. Put him back in there too. Now, I don't care how this looks at this point, so I could still change it. I think I'm going to start already by putting this wave in here. Sometimes you gotta stand back and look at the canvas to see if it's going the way you want it to. I think it is. 
So now, I'll take a one inch brush, and ocean waves have this little eye, or at least in typical Bob Ross seascapes. So I'm going to start here and blend outward. Since this isn't drying out on me, it's much easier. I'm going to wash my brush again. I'm going to blend him out. Careful going back into this light area, liable to get it dirty. I know, I'm doing it anyway. But you can always make it brighter. I have to wonder if I can make this brighter with my fan brush. And you can. Had a little hair there. Now, I'll wash my dirty fan brush and start making those waves. Can't really beat on this brush. Now, be careful if you're going to do it on the brush beater rack, though. It tends to make the little metal points of the brush bend out, and I can break it. So I'm going to take these and pull them outward with a slight curve. Don't worry about this little black area. That's what you want. I'm going to do the same, just a teeny bit of white. I'm going to pull this out too. I'm going to pull it at a slight curve. As the wave gets closer, make it make more of a curve. You'll see how I'm going to do that with this big one later. Starting to look like waves now. Yeah. Careful blending this area. That will mess up your dark area. Take a little more blue white, make it even more curly. So if this is the right term to use for this. Mm -hmm. 
I think Bob does it like this, but I think I'm going to do it this way. Looks like I've already got foam patterns going on. I didn't even do any special detail work. I think. Yep. There's one more right here. Stop it right there. That's where my big wave is, but I'm going to continue it right there. Yeah, I think it's time to give this giant wave some foam. I'm going to take my fan brush and make some splashes. Tapping and making a bit of a circular motion with it. I'm going to start back here again. Use both sides of the fan brush. That's why there's two sides to them. the rest of the foam here. The biggest areas of foam are going to be right here. I'm going to wash my brush and then I'm going to blend it out. Let's start. See if this works. If it doesn't work, don't worry, I'll try something else. Seems to be working good. I think that's about how much I want blended. Not too much. I want the little spiky foam things going at the top. Now comes the extra fun part. I'm going to thin this down just a hair. Ooh, the liquid white's running. Now I'm just going to just do a little zigzag. This is the same thing as this foam thing, but because it's much closer, foam patterns are much bigger. And you can also take your script liner brush and make these, but this sort of helps it get done fast. Now I'm going to take a one inch brush and sort of pull it out that way. To use this curling motion will make the wave look more realistic. Careful going into that that eye. I'm 
You do it good enough. It should look very soft to me anyway. It's almost done, I think. I got some black on here. Midnight black. I'm gonna make some palm trees. Every landscaper seascape needs a tree. I think one lives right here. So we did such a good seascape and that crazy kid tells you to put a palm tree through it. Don't always have them going at a straight line. Give them some character. I mean, he's got probably got a friend. Well, I think he does. Right here. Oops, covered in the cloud. That's okay. Y'all know how I made it. Now I'm gonna take black. This is already relatively thin anyway, so I'm just going to make some little arc shapes, just like a curve. Maybe there's, yep, in your world you can decide however many leaves you want, but I think this one I want four. He's only got three, so why don't we give him one more. There we go, I want it to be small at that end. Now I'm going to clean my fan brush. it off. Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to look at it's sort of going with a, an upward and outward flick. trees, got my way, got clouds, I got a moon. Ah, signature. No pain is complete without your signature. Let's dip into some thinner and go into some phthalo blue. I typically sign in bright red or this is sort of red color. So red's my favorite color. Just 
sort of twirl it. If it's thin enough, it'll flow right over your canvas. I'm thinking this sign here. I have a nervous twitch when I hold this brush for some reason. Which means I'd probably be good at making those trees of dead limbs. That's what Bob usually said. With that, I think we have a finished painting. So from the cameraman and I here, I'd like to thank you very much for watching this video. Please subscribe and happy painting. <laughs>